So you can suspect heart failure in patients who are having risk factors like diabetes, hypertension, uh, those who are having symptoms and signs pertinent to heart failure and who are having abnormal EKG. And uh, if that is the case, then you can do Antipro BNP. And with this, finally, I can complete this chapter with the algorithm. So these are the diagnostic algorithm given in EAC 2021 guidelines to diagnose heart failure. So you can suspect heart failure in patients who are having risk factors like diabetes, hypertension, uh, those who are having symptoms and signs pertinent to heart failure and who are having abnormal EKG. And uh, if that is the case, then you can do Antipro BNP. So if the Antipro BNP is more than 125 or if the BNP values are more than 35, then you can go on to echocardiography because you need to confirm whether it's a heart failure or not. If the Antipro BNP or BNP values are normal, as I've told you, because they have a high negative priority value, heart failure becomes extremely unlikely. You need to consider other possible diagnosis for the symptoms and signs. And if the echocardiography is also abnormal, uh, and if the Antipro BNP is high, then in this situation, definitely you can diagnose a heart failure, whether it reduce ejection fraction or mildly reduce ejection fraction, or it can be even a preserved ejection fraction. Suppose if echo is normal, there is no abnormal finding, then once again your heart failure becomes extremely unlikely and you have to consider alternative possibilities. So once you know it's uh, heart failure through Antipro BNP and your echocardiogram, you can categorize into reduced ejection fraction, which means EF less than 40 percentage or mildly reduced ejection fraction, which means EF is 41 to 49 percentage or preserved ejection fraction if the EF is more than or equal to 50 percentage. And once you know the classification of heart failure, now you can determine the etiology and comments treatment based on that. Okay. So as I've told you already, so first, if a patient is having heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, the EF will be less than or equal to 40 percentage and the patient will be having symptoms and signs of heart failure. If the patient is having mildly reduced ejection fraction, EF will be in the range of 41 to 49 percentage and the patient will be having symptoms and signs of heart failure as well. In heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, this is where the problem is, the EF will be normal. So the patients will be having symptoms and signs. So you will not be able to say whether the patient is having heart failure or not or whether these symptoms and signs are pertinent to heart failure or not. So that is why there is a third criteria that is included to diagnose heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. That is, you should have objective evidence of structural or functional abnormality. And you need to find out using echocardiogram. Okay. So what are the objective evidence of structural and functional cardiac abnormality? For example, there could be increased LV mass index of more than 95 grams per meter square in uh, females or more than 115 grams per meter square in males or there could be increased relative wall thickness of more than 0.42 at least or increased LA volume index of more than 34 mLs per meter square. This is something we discussed already or increased E bar E prime ratio at rest, which is more than nine, which I've discussed already or elevated BNP or antipro BNP or there should be elevated pulmonary artery systolic pressure, which is defined as a PASP of more than at least 35 millimeters of mercury, which I've discussed this already on how to find out PASP that is nothing but right ventricular systolic pressure or you should have an elevated TR jet velocity of more than 2.8 meters per second at rest. So most of the things we have discussed already but two things I have not told you is the relative wall thickness and the LV mass index, how, how we are going to find out. So for example, relative wall thickness can be easily found out by the formula 2 multiplied by posterior wall divided by left ventricular diastolic diameter okay and diastolic diameter so this will tell you the relative wall thickness remember normal relative wall thickness is less than or equal to 0.42 this is normal if it is more than 0.42 it is abnormal and that indicates a structural abnormality of the heart remember you know how to find out posterior wall thickness and you know how to find out the left ventricular and diastolic diameter as well using the plaques view and using the M mode, how to find out, which I've told you already. And how to find out the uh, left ventricular mass index. We have a very complicated formula for that, but you will be able to find out. The formula says that LV mass uh, index will be equivalent to 0.6 gram plus 
0.8 multiplied by 1.04 times the LV diastolic diameter, okay, that is internal diameter during end of the diastole, plus the posterior wall thickness, plus the septal thickness cubed minus the left ventricular internal diameter during end of the diastole cubed, okay. So, this is going to be the formula as far as your LV mass index is concerned. So, this uh, machine itself will give, so you need not measure basically. But the what are the variables here? The variables are LV end diastolic diameter, which is something you know already, and posterior wall thickness, which you can find find out, I, which, I mean, with the technique which I have told you, and the septal thickness is also something that can be easily found out. So, the value will be given by the machine. So, the LV mass index, if it's more than 95 grams per meter square in females and if it's more than 115 grams per meter square in a male patient then it is clearly abnormal and indicates some structural abnormality so remember heart failure with reduced ejection fraction as well as mildly reduced ejection fraction can be solely diagnosed with echocardiogram itself but to diagnose heart failure with preserved ejection fraction you need to have an evidence of uh, some structural or functional abnormality like antiporo BNP or some echocardiographic abnormality to make a diagnosis. That's why diagnosis of HFPF is often very, very challenging. And according to the algorithm, remember if antiporo BNP or BNP is negative, heart failure becomes unlikely. So that is the first step that you're going to do in a patient with suspected heart failure. And on the other hand, if the BNP or antiporo BNP is elevated, you need to go with the echocardiogram. If the echocardiogram is normal, still it rules out heart failure. Or on the other hand, if the echocardiogram is also abnormal, then only you are going to uh, make out the possibility of diagnosis of heart failure in the first place.